one of the biggest names in Spanish football, Sevilla FC, a historic club with a huge fan base. Between 2019 and 2021, one of their main sponsors was an online trading platform called EverFX. Glossy promo videos, even endorsements from star players. So thank you, EverFX. EverFX, main global sponsor of Sevilla Football Club. It gave the company an air of respectability. The problem is, EverFX was part of an international scam network. Journalist Simona Weinglass has spent years investigating the network, tracking down their victims, who were often pressured to put more money in when their initial trades went wrong. Put some more money in, yeah, and double up. If you put £25,000 in, then you could wipe out your losses and make a profit. And I said, no, I'm not doing that, absolutely not. I just want to just bring my losses down to a manageable amount and I'm going to get out. And um, I, I must have got at least half a dozen calls from half a dozen individuals in the space of about two hours. My phone just kept on blowing up, begging me basically to put some more money in. This is the moment Barry learned he had been scammed. I am horrified. I'm numb. I can't believe this because I was never really going to get that back. The investigation worked with a former employee of the network, now in hiding, trying to track down the people behind it. They found multiple companies, all with the same website, sign-up pages, and underlying code. They were all part of one secretive organization, exactly. the Milton Group. OK, let's look at how many brands are there total. 152. But the BBC were not the only ones trying to track down the scammers. German prosecutors were also on their trail. They are operating like professional legal companies and that's what we say, this is organised crime. And how much money are some of these larger organised crime groups bringing in? Probably hundreds of millions per year. What has never been understood is who is at the centre of this huge scam. Until now. The investigation started by deliberately getting scammed by a Milton Group company called Coinevo for $500 paid in Bitcoin. Because Bitcoin is on a public ledger, you can follow where it goes. It was traced through thousands of online crypto wallets, as was the money deposited with EverFX, the brand that scammed Barry. It all ended up in just a few dozen, suspected to be owned by the people behind the scams. But how to prove who those people are? It is a difficult task, deliberately so. If you are coming at it as an investigative journalist, or more likely, as a law enforcement agent, you have to go to every one of those jurisdictions, write them a letter, formal process, and then receive information about the ownership of that company. That may take you six months, it may take you a year, it may not be possible at all. So the point of the complexity is to make things incomprehensible, and essentially to try and force other people just to give up. But the team believed they'd cracked it. The whistleblower was at the Milton 2020 New Year's Eve party. There, a man called David was named as the father of Milton. He was identified as David Todua, a gun-loving Georgian businessman. This was the start of a long and painstaking process of building a picture of the Milton network. By piecing together property deals, shared directorships, social media profiles, and working with other investigators, they built a picture of the organisation. Then another piece of the jigsaw. This time from going back in time to 2016. As the world wakes up to the enormity of the revelations in the Panama Papers... The Panama Papers were a huge cache of offshore business records, supposed to be confidential, but revealed to the world. They not only showed the group we believe to be senior associates had close business dealings together, before the emergence of Milton, but also revealed the involvement of someone even more interesting. David Kesarashvili was Georgia's defence minister when Russia invaded in 2008. After his country's defeat, he left office and started a business career. He gained the nickname Mr Offshore. He was found guilty of corruption charges, but fled to the UK, where he successfully resisted deportation claiming it was all politically motivated. 
Leaked company data show that he sat at the centre of this network of offshore companies. Not connected to Milton, but to the men who we have identified. If it weren't for the Panama Papers, this may have stayed hidden forever. Late last year, there was a new development. Europol invited the BBC team on a raid of Milton offices, which was being carried out across five countries. You had the names of people that they were calling to get money from them. And here you have four British names here. So you can see that this is just a call center that was allegedly scamming people all over the world. On a notebook found in a Milton office, it says of a man, no liabilities, wants to buy a property, not discussing numbers, very pussy, should scam soon. We know from the Panama Papers that in 2016, Kezrashvili had connections to the men now behind the Milton Group. But what about today? Well, he's not really on the paperwork that we can see. But he has connections to the company that built some Milton trading platforms, shares email servers, and owns the building that one of their call centers was run from. And here he is, at a wedding with many of the people identified in the investigation. On top of that, he has countless social media links to many parts of the network. He now lives in an £18 million London townhouse, but didn't want to speak to the BBC about our findings. He's not, he's not available? OK, thank you very much. OK, bye-bye. In correspondence, his lawyers said he strongly denies any involvement with Milton, or that he gained financially from scams. He says that EverFX was, to his knowledge, a legitimate business, and that the connections we have found to the people and IT behind it prove nothing. David Todua, the gun-loving Georgian, did not respond to our questions. EverFX denied our allegations, saying that they are a legitimate and regulated platform where the risks are fully explained. The other senior figures we identified all strongly denied any connection with the Milton Group or trading scams. Those involved in running EverFX say it never accepted deposits in Bitcoin or had a crypto wallet. They maintain that its brand and source code have been misappropriated, which explains the similarities with other fraudulent platforms. As for Barry, they say his case was investigated and he was found to be responsible for his losses. The whistleblower is still living in a secret location from where he tracks the Milton Group. The Europol raids made a significant dent in their business, but he says they have already started to recover.